I am finally, after three years, officially back in the 400s on bench press. Now, I've previously made a video on how I finally overcame my shoulder pain, so I'll save it here, but in short, it was all mental retraining. Phantom pain is very real. Now, in today's video, not only did I bench 400, but I accumulated a ton of volume, and we're actually going to explain some advanced programming theory here. Volume accumulation, or in other words, workload is the name of the game for strength adaptations. The more work you can do and recover from, the more progress you will see. Today, my workout was a lot of volume while simultaneously hitting a rehab PR. The workout you're seeing was 225 pounds for 10 reps, followed by 260 pounds for eight reps, followed by 295 pounds for six reps, followed by 330 pounds for four reps, and then 365 pounds for two reps. And then finally, I did my 400 pound bench press single. That's 8,550 pounds of total workload if you multiply sets times reps times weight. This is the scientific way of accumulating volume. If I had done a more traditional workout where I didn't do pyramid volume, I would have done something like a 415 pound single, with back down sets of 365 pounds for a four by four, which equates to only 6,255 pounds of total workload. Clearly you can see while I may have had a slightly diminished top single, I just barely had a diminished top single I might add, I would have gotten less total work. Now, obviously, there's some other factors to examine, like intensity zone thresholds that have carryover to strength. The scientific literature showcases for advanced athletes, high threshold motor unit recruitment can take place as low as 60%. In beginner trainees, it's much higher, around 80%. This means that your muscle fibers that are most important when it comes to strength and size adaptations don't really get recruited until you're working with 80% load on the bar in relation to your one rep max when you're a beginner, but when you're advanced, it's much, much lower. I'm not saying this workout is optimal for strength over a traditional top set protocol. However, I am saying it can be a tool for building strength in specific time periods where workload is priority over intensity specific adaptations. If you're having trouble understanding advanced programming, reach out for coaching guys. You can sign up down below with a meeting to meet with me one-on-one. -on -one. I'm taking athletes right now. You just fill out a questionnaire in the description box below and we'll actually sit down on Zoom and cover your training and see if we're a good fit for each other for coaching. Now, I want to show you guys these last sets here. This is the 330 playing on the screen. You're going to see the 365 here for a double. And after I hit this, even though this was actually pretty challenging, probably about RP8 or so, I knew I had 400 pounds. I mean, I'll let that play. This is the one. We back in 400 today, motherfucker. Watch me. I'm always afraid before all these big sets. I'm in here alone. I got the safeties up, but... Some shit tears off, man. I'm alone. I'm on my own. I got my dog. That's about it. This is my shit. The fear is what makes you. That's what people don't get. If you ain't afraid, you ain't trying hard enough. Look at that motherfucker. Let's go. Woo. They don't fucking make them like me, boy. They really don't, man. No matter how many setbacks, from 2016 all the way to the end of 2019, no squat PRs until I did that fucking comeback meet and I barely chipped a PR. Almost four years with no squat progress. Last two years on bench press, nothing. Couldn't even barbell bench most weeks. It, it, uh, dude, I could go down the laundry list. Nothing fucking stops me. And all the hate, bro, it's not even fuel. The total opposite, it's disgusting. When I see that shit, I'm not like some of these guys who say, oh, I use hate as fuel. I don't even interact with that shit, bro. All these motherfuckers trying to roast, dude. I'm not even on a program right now and I just benched 400. Dude, I'm going fucking insane after all that ascending volume too. Fucking watch what happens in October, bitch. This is what it's about. See, people don't understand hype after the gym. They go, like, oh, why does this guy get so hyped up when he hits something heavy on a barbell? One, because it's scary, motherfucker. But two, it's, this is an expression of all the hard work, the determination, getting through all those fucking plateaus and injuries, putting in 24 seven effort with my diet, with my recovery, with every single thing. I sacrificed my job for this shit. I sacrificed my lifestyle for this shit. Everything about powerlifting requires 24 seven sacrifice. There isn't another sport in the world that requires that. You know how I know this? Cause in San Francisco, when I used to hang out in the city on the weekends, I'd see all the fucking players during playoffs out clubbing. 
Of course, they didn't have a game the next day, but they're out clubbing, dude. We used to see Clay Thompson in them. They're not actually about it. They're just genetically gifted. I don't give a fuck what anyone says, bro. I'm sure some of those motherfuckers, like Kobe, he was about it. That's why Kobe was great. But this shit right here, I can't do that at all, ever. None of that shit works with the barbell. The barbell breaks your body down in ways nothing else does. It's a constant fucking hammering of your CNS. So when I get hyped, boy, that's because I've spent two years without giving up. I didn't alter, I didn't falter on my diet, I didn't falter on my sleep, I didn't falter on my programming, nothing. For two fucking years without a single PR, and now we're back at 400, and I'm not even on program right now. Fucking watch what happens. Now, I'm sure that was a lot of hype <laughs> right after a very chill like intro, uh, but we're going to finish up this video here with some accessories, guys. Now, um, I'm in fucking bear mode, as you can see. I mean, I'm definitely not chubby by any means, but I am way heavier than I have been in the last three years. You guys know I was walking around rather shredded uh, really from 2021 all the way into probably the beginning of 2023. And I spent about two years hanging out somewhere between 8 to 12% body fat during that time period. The majority of it spent closer to 8 to 10% body fat. And that was mainly so I could make weight in the 198-pound weight class, as well as just enjoy a cut, which I had not done for four years previous, mainly due to rehabilitating all the squat injuries that I was talking about in my very passionate rant. Um, but yeah, guys, just doing some cable flies here. Now, whenever I have a really big bench day, and keep in mind, while I have bench pressed 400 pounds years ago, it's been a long time since I've done that. And the last time I maxed out on bench um, a few weeks ago, I hit 365. So that was a humongous rehab PR. My body's not adapted to that. So I'm taking it really easy on these accessories. One of the quickest ways you can work yourself right back into an injury is you know going ham on you know the main compound movement like your bench press. And then trying to also go ham on too many accessories on a day where you just really tapped out your recovery capability. It's all about how much you can recover from. Now, you guys can see here on these curls, on these push downs, these cable flies, definitely holding a little bit more body fat, but by no means bad. I'm still uh, having visible abs here, and I'll do a little flex show for you guys at the end. But that's pretty much the video. If you guys are interested in group coaching, uh, we utilize a lot of what I discussed in this video in our group coaching programs, and we know when to implement this. So, you know, there's times where you want to focus more on workload in your training and accumulation of volume while simultaneously ensuring you're keeping your top end strength trained. And then there's times where you want to go a lot more intensity based and you're going to utilize a traditional top set with back down kind of protocols. Uh, so if you're interested either in our group coaching or like I said, signing up for a one-on-one -on -one coaching diagnostic, it is free. Go ahead and reach out using the links down below. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Love y'all.